Hello, my art-loving friends. I am Deborah Kay, and I welcome you to Paint with a Passion. Today, we're going to paint the adorable, thankful gnome. This is a really fun project that is sure to bring a smile to your face. Here's my recipe. You can pause here to gather what you need, or just refer to the list in the description area below this video. So get all your goodies together and let's go make the magic happen as we paint with a passion. I'm painting on a 6 by 8 inch press board. And you can use anything you want as your canvas. Just make sure that you prime any surface that's porous so you protect your painting. We're going to paint an ombre style background. I'm speaking of the French ombre, which means tones of color that shade into each other, often graduating from dark to light. Using a flat bristle brush, let's paint the top two-thirds of the canvas blue. While the blue is still wet, and without cleaning off the brush, let's add some green. Overlap the blue with a small amount of the green, and then gradually work your way down with the green becoming the dominant color at the bottom of the canvas. Brush side to side, and just try not to apply too much pressure. A neat little trick I use is to grab an old plastic lid and then I attach it to the back of my canvas using earthquake putty. And this way I can pick up the canvas and paint the sides real easy without getting paint all over the place. Once the paint is dry, let's draw on the mushroom and the pumpkin. There's a lot of steps to this painting, so I've decided to try and put it together in the order of its layers. And um, we're going to save the outlining for the very last. Does that make sense? I think it does. Let's go with it. Let's paint the base colors of our mushroom. Now, the red cap, it's going to take a few coats. Have you ever noticed how it's hard to get good coverage with red sometimes? And that is because red is naturally translucent. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Um, if you prefer, you can paint the mushroom cap gray first and then paint on the red.
I'm painting the stem and the undercarriage, or uh, the gills, um, gray. And I'm going to leave a gap between the stem and the gills for the outline that we'll be adding at the end. Now let's paint the pumpkin and let's leave space between the sections where we're going to add some darker orange for the ribs. The orange is also going to need additional coats to cover just like the red. So I guess it's a toss-up. Uh, do I paint extra coats of orange? Do I paint a gray base? Decisions, decisions, whichever way you want to go. Now, let's add the pumpkin ribs. Is it ribs? I think it is. I'm going with it. Using a small sponge, apply some of your lighter orange. Then, paint a fine line of the darker orange, or you could even use brown. And then just dab along the rib to blend them together just a little bit. If you prefer a more defined line, then you can skip the blending. And let's wait and do the pumpkin outline when we do all the final outlining later on. Using a medium sponge, let's add a final coat of red to the mushroom cap. And while the red is still wet, let's blend in a little white along the bottom ridge. This will add dimension and it's going to make the mushroom pop. Do we really want our mushroom to pop? Of course we do! Use a small sponge and dab white along the bottom rim. Then, using the red sponge, go back over the white and blend it into the red. That looks super awesome, doesn't it? Okay, let's draw on our gnome.
And now let's paint in the hat and the base of his beard. And let's paint the pants and the shoes. Okay, let's move back to the mushroom. The mushroom needs some gills and we need to highlight the stem. Let's paint every third gill white. And while we have the white handy, let's use a small bristle brush and wisp some highlights onto the stem. Load a very small amount of the paint onto the tip of the brush and then blot it off and then very lightly just wisp the white right onto the stem. Just swish, swish, swish. Let's also add some red wisps to the stem. Swish, swish, swish. And then using the white, the red, and the gray, let's wisp the colors until we have it just the way we want it. And you could even add some black if you'd like. Now let's paint on some black gills. And let's also divide the gray and the white gills with some fine black lines. I decided to change the hat to black. And that's the great thing about painting. You get to make all the decisions and if you change your mind, you just paint right over it.
All right, let's paint our gnome's beard and add his nose. I'm using a custom fine lining brush and some black paint, and I'm just using little flicking strokes all around the edge. Oh, whoops, I meant to add his nose first. So let's add that now and then we can finish adding the beard. Okay, so now let's go over the black with the same technique and add white flicks. It's pretty cool if I do say so, which I just did. So I guess I think it's cool, but anyways. If you end up with a clump of color, just leave it for a minute and then come back to it and break it up with the opposite color. I've included a link to my Super Skinny Fine Line and Brush tutorial. It's in the description area below this video if you'd like to make your own Super Skinny Fine Line and Brushes. Okay, so I decided on another hat change. I want more of a sloping hat brim rather than a stocking cap. So I'm just adding some tips on each side. Of course, the hat needs a band. Let's add a second coat to the nose and smooth it out if you'd like with a sponge. And let's add a sign in front of the mushroom. I think the pants need some stripes. our gnome assigned to hold too. definitely needs a buckle.
All right, I think it's a good time to start outlining everything. I'm using dark orange around the pumpkin. If you need to reload in the middle of a line, always paint a little ways back from where you left off. And that way you won't create a break or a junction spot in the line. And I chose cranberry wine to outline the mushroom head. Don't rush, take your time. Make sure not to apply too much pressure on the brush so that you can keep the lines real thin. Make sure to outline around the bottom gill area too. I'm using black around the stem. Oh, and be careful not to run the outline through the sign, right? And let's go ahead and paint the post sign. Let's add our messages to the signs. And while we have the white out, let's add a light reflection to the gnome's nose. Okay, let's get our dotting tools out and add some spots to our mushroom head. Our gnome definitely needs some mittens to hold his sign.
I decided to give my gnome some beard extensions because I felt like the legs didn't look long enough from where the bend in the knee hit and he really didn't look like he was actually sitting on the pumpkin. Much better. Time to varnish. Make sure all the paint is dry, especially the dots on the mushroom, and also make sure all the chalk marks are erased. I like to use a sponge roller when I'm varnishing on a flat surface. It's my favorite way, but you can also use a flat brush if that's what you prefer. And here we have it. Happy home, happy gnome. How cute is this? You know what? This would make a really cute hanging front door sign or even a post sign that you put in a flower pot on your porch. Just protect it with an all weather varnish and uh, either hang it using twine or attach it to a pole for a planter. I'm especially grateful to be able to share my love of painting with all of you. And I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for joining me today to paint with a passion. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to painting again together real soon. I wish you peace, love and happiness now and always.